Hello everyone. In this video I'm going to show you how you can use a combination of text analysis, network visualization and AI to connect your ideas in an interesting way. So that if you have something like I have here, which is a, a collection of different ideas that I've put into the system at different times, so it's kind of very dispersed and it doesn't make sense yet to me, but I know I'm touching upon some interesting topics. This graph visualization allows me to see how they connect and to find some new connections that I can make in order to make this discourse more coherent and more interesting and for it to start making sense in an interesting way. And I'm going to show you how I would approach this using the tool. So keep watching if you're interested to learn how it works. First of all, you need to open your text in Infranodus and you can import it you just by using copy and paste or importing a file or a collection of notes you have, doesn't matter. Actually, it's nice to start with notes. Usually they're quite disjointed from one another. And here I just have a, like a draft of some idea that I was thinking about, which was about ideological software. And I can see that it's about errors and iteration, introduction of logic and so on. But the thematic diversity, which is shown here on the right, is high. So that means that I have quite a few topics that are distinct from one another and they're not really connected. So what I'm going to try to do is to connect them better. And I will show you the different tools, AI-based tools and also text network analysis-based tools that you can use in order to make these connections happen. First of all, what I like to do is just to get a general overview of the text. By the way, this workflow is also available here on the right. Uh, so you can follow the steps to perform the same analysis. I will look at the main nodes and see uh, what are the concepts that are used. So for example, I'm talking about software, errors, introducing logic, iteration, variation, decision. Okay, uh, this is quite dispersed. I can read, of course, everything that I wrote and kind of have a, an overview like this, or I can also generate a summary from the visible statements here, which will create a sort of AI-based summary of the ideas that I'm writing about. And if I like what I see, I can add it into the graph in order to connect them better. Because usually what summaries do, they try to connect the ideas. And uh, ChatGPT or GPT-3 is really good in that, actually, right? So here it's saying how programming is a precise and defined process, but that errors can also be interesting, even though usually they're seen as negative because they allow you to introduce variations into this logic. And maybe this could be one of the ideologies in the software that it allows you to think in the way that you would not normally think. And if I like this idea, I can save it into the graph and it's going to be highlighted. So as you can see, it's touching upon all the important topics. And now it's making thematic diversity medium lower because it connected uh, some of the ideas together in an interesting way. But now we encounter another problem, and this is quite interesting because the graph allows us to see that. Uh, we're too focused on the idea of error and logic, okay? And the rest are kind of underrepresented. So by following the ecological variability scheme, which is part of Infranodus, we see that we, we were at this stage of dispersed ideas, then we added an idea and directly jumped here where we're too focused on certain central ideas. This can actually be good for some purposes. For example, if we want to talk about uh, software and errors and just that, but I know that my objective is beyond um, these two main topics. I want to talk about how you can build in ideology, a certain ideology into software, how it happens and uh, how it can be done and what are the advantages and disadvantages and dangers of that. So I have to develop the themes at the periphery. And this is what Infranodus is guiding me through. If it sees I'm too focused, it's going to guide me to make those ideas more dispersed, but it's going to do that through introducing some interesting connections between the ideas that I could connect. Um, so for example, in this case, I can actually use the, the suggestion here and click the button, and it's going to show me two topics that could be better connected. One is uh, on optimized feedback adversarial and another one on implementing logic, and is generating a question to stimulate me to think in this direction. So here the question is, how can an adversarial response logic be implemented to optimize feedback? Okay, this is quite general, but let's see what else it has. 
how can logic-based optimization be used to facilitate an adversarial response to feedback and implement it effectively? This seems more interesting to me because it's talking about a sort of feedback that challenges me and makes me want to implement a different logic and how this could be built into software. So I can actually save this question into my notes because I find it interesting. So it's going to open the special uh, notes panel here and save it into notes so I can use it later for future reference. What I can also do is if, let's say, I don't want to answer this question myself, but I just want to play around with GPT, I could make a manual query with the same question and maybe add something about software here. So for example, I could say, facilitate an adversarial response to feedback and implement it effectively in the context of software uh, tools for cognition. Uh, so it's quite a complicated question, but GPT-4 is always good in coming up with uh, the answers anyway. So I like to use this approach to find some interesting connections. It might not be true what it comes up with, but it will definitely connect ideas in an interesting way that can stimulate me to think further in this direction. So for example, here it's talking about logic-based optimization that can enhance adversarial response by analyzing feedback and identifying cognitive weak points, then applying targeted adjustments and software tools to improve decision-making and cognition. So maybe something about uh, adversarial response, so challenging uh, the input of the user by providing them some different perspectives on what they're writing about. So for example, if I'm thinking about uh, a chatbot that could function not as an assistant, but rather as someone who always tries to have a, a sparring, an intellectual sparring with you and to challenge you constantly. So that could be an interesting idea to add uh, or an interesting example of a tool. So I'm going to actually save it into the graph. Like this, we can diversify the discourse and focus less on errors in software and more on the adversarial responses. As, as you can see, thematic diversity now shifted to optimal again. Uh, because we touched upon uh, the different clusters that we didn't touch on before. And then we can reiterate and go through the same process, either by using uh, the suggestions here, so how to shift into the disperse mode again, because basically what we want to do is to go through all these stages here, right? We want to be at some point uh, connecting ideas, then when we reach a saturation, um, in the connections, then we want to disrupt them, find some gaps, and then generate some ideas that maybe do not relate to the central theme of the discourse to enrich it, going beyond the periphery, and then focusing again on a certain idea, and then going deeply into it, developing it, and then disrupting it again. So this is the ecological thinking scheme, which is implemented in Fernando's algorithm, which is shown here. But you can also do this manually, just by looking at the graph, you know, it's it's actually pretty intuitive because uh, if your intention is to lay out a certain discursive field, uh, you don't want to focus too much on specific subjects like uh, logic and error and software in this case. You actually want to focus on the peripheral ideas, you know, some kind of notions that are related to your discourse, but that you're not touching upon yet. And for example, here I see something about decision, mutation, pattern. Doesn't make sense at all, but this is the interesting part because I can feed it into AI and make it generate something in relation to those uh, ideas that will maybe bring in some interesting topics to me. So here is just like it says that mutations in decision-making patterns can lead to innovative solutions through unexpected alterations. Actually, this is great. I'm going to save it into the graph as one of the ideas and generate some more responses. Unexpected growth I don't need. Decision making can be influenced by evolving patterns and mutations leading to innovative solutions over time. So it's basically the same thing, how it can help some kind of innovative evolution solutions. Okay, I can also select those terms and generate a question instead that would contain those terms. So that would make me think in this direction. And here it's saying, how can innovative mutation patterns be used to improve decision-making and drive evolutionary adaptation? So for example, I can say that, okay, maybe um, if I am made to think in a way where I have to break my own patterns, perhaps 
um, I could also change the approaches that I normally have to things and uh, modify my decision-making process in a way that I would make them more interesting or effective depending on the context I have. And here the question is how? And this is a hard question to answer straight away. So I'm going to select this question and feed it back to ChatGPT and see what it can come up with. Uh, let's wait. Maybe it can come up with some specific implementation of how it can be used. And here it says that it, it can enhance by fostering. Okay, but how? While evolutionary adaptation benefits from this accelerating the growth and resilience, changing environment by fostering diverse perspectives. So this is interesting. So in fact, what it proposes me to think about is how I can diversify perspectives. And if I'm thinking about it in the context of developing software, I could say that it could be important maybe to work on software that doesn't only challenge you, but that can also provide different perspectives. So if I like this idea, in this case, I'm not going to copy anything from the AI, I'm just going to write it myself. Uh, it could be interesting to develop the kind of, I'm just gonna move my image, oops, on the top here. Uh, it could be interesting to develop the kind of software tools that could at the same time challenge us, but also provide diverse perspectives. And, uh, make us change our decision process. For example, an AI chatbot that could enhance my perspectives by challenging them and diversifying them. Okay, add this into the graph. It's highlighted here so I can see how it fits into the discourse. I still have the optimal thematic diversity, so I'm not focusing too much on one subject because I'm developing now this cluster here. Um, and as you can see, I have a certain balance of connectivity and disconnectivity in here. Um, but as this video is about connecting ideas, the next thing that I would do is to see like, okay, I just talked about decision patterns, mutation patterns, how I can connect it in an interesting way to some other parts of the discourse. So for example, here I can see that there's something about implementing algorithms and protocols uh, through some kind of logic and maybe human. So I can select those ideas. As you can see, they're not so well connected. There is not too many common nodes. Uh, there are some nodes that each of this, these clusters touch upon, but nothing in common. So I'm going to, again, use uh, uh, the question module here and try to generate a research question that would connect those ideas answer it myself, and if I cannot answer it, send it to GPT-4 to generate some interesting content. So for example here, uh, how can machine learning algorithms be developed to analyze and adapt human decision patterns to enable more efficient and effective? So here's talking about efficiency, I'm not so interested in this, but in fact, what I'm going to do, I'm going to play a little bit with the, the AI, copy, uh, to enable less efficient and ineffective logic implementation because I'm interested uh, in using the AI for creative purposes also so I don't want it to be only about efficiency. So as you can see I'm taking the hints it's giving me a human in the loop approach but steering the conversation in the direction that I find important and relevant for my purposes. So having a graph is a great way to do that because uh, instead of having to read through all the text and kind of making these combinations manually through text, I can actually see directly what's missing, what are the gaps and how I can connect them. And here it's giving me an answer on how machine learning algorithms can be designed to analyze human decision patterns by, by incorporating cognitive biases, allowing the system to adapt and offer alternative logic, reducing inefficient and in okay, but in fact, it still goes into the effective direction but what I like is this notion of cognitive bias. So for example, maybe this challenging tool, and this I'm going to write down, uh, maybe this tool could uh, challenge me and provide a different perspective by implementing a cognitive bias 
which would be different from my own. So as you can see, again, I'm connecting those ideas, but I'm connecting them in my own way, just using the AI to help me uh, stimulate myself thinking in this direction, okay? So here I'm using cognitive biases, but in order to challenge uh, the people. So in instead of this idea of re removing a cognitive bias, in fact, I'm bringing it in as a way to challenge uh, our perspectives. This is how you would approach this. And as you can see, we have quite a diverse discourse now, which is talking about software errors, but also decision-making processes and logics. And they're all connected in some ways, um, but not too much. So there's not too much focus on one idea. We're not going in loops, but we're exploring all the different aspects. Um, I showed you how you can do this using the graph itself and the AI. If you want, you can also use the analytics panel and use the gap inside feature here which basically identifies the gaps in the network and then tries to connect them for you by asking a research question. So here it's one gap on introducing uh, natural variation cycles uh, and then another cluster on software tools and decision making. Okay, so variability in decision making. I can ask the AI to generate a research question that would link those two ideas together in an interesting way. And here it says, what technological tools can be developed to introduce a natural temporal cycle of variation in sleep-wake operation that will provide an interesting challenge to the existing software workflow and evolution? It sounds like it doesn't make sense, but what I like to do with this kind of questions, uh, which seem like they don't make sense, is to feed them to GPT-4, because uh, this is exactly what it's good for. Things don't make sense when we connect ideas in ways that haven't been connected before. And uh, this is where AI is great, because if I read this question, I might ask myself, how is it possible to think of a connection? But ChatGPT, GPT-4 has to think of a connection. And maybe it's gonna come up with something interesting. Like here it says that I could develop a wearable that could adapt the physiological fluctuations, uh, introducing natural temporal cycles and sleep-wake patterns, so kind of making my rhythm more natural, uh, offering a stimulating challenge for existing software workflows and driving their evolution. So maybe some tool that uh, introduces natural cycles into my everyday life. This can be interesting because uh, I'm challenging my uh, workflow like a normal pattern of life by introducing those natural patterns. So wearables that could introduce uh, natural cycles into my uh, life and sleep wake patterns and uh, software that could be developed based on that. So this is great because it's connecting two ideas, as you can see here. It's connecting two ideas that were not so well connected before and it's proposing to think of a new direction. And then I can reiterate through those gaps and generate some more ideas. So this is a very powerful approach if you want to connect uh, the ideas that have gaps between them. Instead of only using the graph, you're using this built-in system that identifies the clusters that are further from each other and then generates a research question that would link them together. So this is how it would work, how you could use Infranodus, text network visualization, text analysis and AI to connect ideas. I hope you find it interesting. Uh, I encourage you to try it on your own notes, so it doesn't have to be a finished text. You can even just write a new text using this uh, editor here, live. As you write, it's going to be visualized and you will already find the gaps and possible connections in your text. Um, try it out on infranodus.com. Let me know how it works. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave them in the comments to this video or also contact us through the support channel. And remember to subscribe to this channel also so that you can get informed when we have the new videos out. Thank you very much.